I don't think it's any secret that the vintage Kenner Jabba the Hutt is my favorite toy of all time, and that's for various reasons. I really like Jabba as a character, of course, but this particular toy and the place that it came in is my favorite because, well, it's really well done, basically. It's got uh, very nice and detailed sculpting that also kind of evokes the vintage Kenner charm. It's almost got a, a childlike quality to it in some way. Uh, it's got a cool action feature and I don't know, I just really like it. And so when I had the opportunity to have uh, Desert Octopus scan one of my vintage Jabba figures to make a 3D model of it that we could use for 3D printing, I jumped at the chance. And uh, as you may know, if you've been watching the channel, I've been using that model for lots of different projects. I've done everything from, you know, straight up recreating this model, or this uh, figure rather, with 3D printing. This is resin 3D printed, as I show in this video here. And I've also done uh, a hologram version of the same model using translucent resin, which I think looks really cool. I've even done a couple of versions I don't think I've shown on the channel. We have translucent green, translucent red, and of course I did a completely translucent version that I turned into a light-up uh, LED lamp, which I show here. In addition to that, I've taken this uh, model and shrunk it down so that we have like a half-scale version and a quarter-scale version, and even smaller versions like this one here. But if I'm honest, the reason that I wanted to get a 3D model of this figure in the first place, or the main reason, was so that I could recreate the prototype jumbo vintage Jabba the Hutt that Gentle Giant showed off at San Diego Comic-Con, oh, about four years ago at this point. Maybe it's even longer than that. They had originally announced it as a product that was going to be shipping maybe in the next year, and then we just didn't hear anything about it, didn't hear anything about it, and finally, uh, just recently, there was a forum post by a former Gentle Giant employee who said that the prototype for that had been sent off to China somewhere and it had been lost. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not as though they couldn't uh, couldn't recreate it, I suppose, if they wanted to. I think it, their version was actually based on 3D printing as well. But it sounds like uh, they couldn't get backing for it. They couldn't convince Lucasfilm at the point at that point that people would would buy it, and the the whole crowdfunding idea that Hasbro has popularized with their Haslab idea uh, was not yet a thing. So basically, it just never took off, and you know it was going to be too expensive to make or whatever. So I don't expect that product to ever exist, unfortunately. But you know, thanks to the power of 3D printing, we can make it ourselves. And that's what I intend to do. So, what that involves is obviously having a very large printer, which thankfully I have <laughs> several of, and, uh, you know, a little know-how about uh, how to best print things, uh, and also finish them up to look like the original figure, which I do have, as you may have noticed. So that was my intention, and I actually started this part of the project quite a while ago, several months ago, uh, I think. Uh, time has lost all meaning for me at this point, but uh, yeah, we've I've, I've gone quite a ways in, uh, in making this figure, this jumbo figure, and then I got a little sidetracked. But uh, today I want to remedy that and actually uh, show you what I've done and actually finish it up as a figure. So I thought before we jump right into the jumbo version, I would show you this regular size version that I printed with a traditional FDM 3D printer. I was sort of doing this as an experiment to see if it would work, and sure enough, if you print at the finest layer height you can, so in my case it was 0.1 millimeters, it comes out really good. I thought <laughs> it was uh, maybe not 100% as good as the resin print, but totally passable. I mean, obviously the uh, support material can be a bit of a problem in places, so I had to... Now let's go ahead and disassemble this a little bit. I had to print this one standing up like this, and you can see if we look closely, there is a little bit of marring from the support material, but if you uh, select, at least in uh, Simplify 3D, this is an option, you can have dense 
support material where the uh, supports meet the actual model. It seems to make it a lot easier to remove and allows you to preserve some of the detail that you would otherwise uh, have turned into sort of a spaghetti looking mess when you're, whenever you're using supports like that. Uh, so, you know, it came out pretty well. We have a lot of banding here for some reason. I'm not really sure what that's about. Um, I think I was starting to get a clog actually when I was printing this. But if you look at the face as well, I thought that came out really well. So if you don't have a resin printer, it's not as though you can't do this kind of printing of action fig figures and so forth. Uh, now the smaller ones might be a little harder, but I did in fact try uh, printing some other Star Wars action figures and they did come out okay. This is the Gamorrean Guard obviously. They, well, they're a little floppy here. The, the, the joints are always a problem even with the resin printer, but uh, I think especially when you're using traditional printing, it, it's a little tricky to get the, the joints proper uh, to fit properly, but yeah, it, it is possible. It is possible to do it. So anyway, if we look at how this is uh, constructed, we have the body, the tail, the head, and then uh, the arms. That one doesn't want to come off right now, but Basically, it's those parts plus a pin that goes in the tail that I don't have to hand right now. So, in order to make a giant version of this, I just had to figure out how big I wanted to scale this up and then print it at that scale. That's pretty much it. But, it turned out to be a little bit harder than I had originally anticipated because of well, various reasons. It's difficult to tell when you have a bunch of different parts like this and you know, they're not connected, how much you need to actually scale them up to get the entire figure to be a certain size. So there was that, and in my case I was trying to match the size of the uh, Gentle Giant vintage Kenner, you know, jumbo figures, and I had assumed, because they were supposed to be sort of 12-inch uh, scale or 1-6 scale figures, that they would be about 12 inches tall for the humanoid figures. So that's what I was basing my scaling on. But as it turns out, when I actually went and measured some of them, they're quite a bit bigger than that. So unfortunately, I'll, well, I'll show you what I did in, in just a second. I, I, I made a, a full jumbo version of the, uh, the Jabba figure, but it turned out to be a little bit smaller than it should be. And so we had to do something about that. But let's we'll just, just wait a minute. I'll, let me show you that first. So it may be difficult to tell without anything else in the frame for reference, but this is actually the first version of my Jumbo Java. And it's about 24 inches from the tail to this side, and 12 inches from the tip of his head to the bottom. And I was pretty happy with it when I finished it up until I put it next to the uh, Jumbo Bib Fortuna figure, which I reviewed a while back. And you can see uh, he just looks much too tall compared to Jabba. So that was a bit of a problem. Uh, as it turned out, this figure in particular is about 13 and a half inches tall which is considerably taller than the 12 inches I sort of had stupidly assumed it would be. So, uh, after <laughs> taking a while to come to terms with the fact that I would have to redo this, I decided to go for broke and redo this whole Java in a larger scale. And as I recall, it was 336% of the original size. But before I show you the finished product, let me talk a little bit about the printing process. I printed this on two different printers. One was the CR10S4 by Creality, that's what you see here. And that's what I did most of the pieces on. But for the main body, as I'll show you in a little bit, I used the Creality CR10S5, which is a larger printer. And this was quite a long process. It took quite a long time. Each one of these sections here was at least a couple of days, if not longer. 
I believe the finished figure weighs a little over eight pounds and extrapolating from that, I didn't really keep track, but I think I must have used right around four or four and a half rolls of filament. This is PLA filament from uh, 3D Solutech. It's their gold filament. Even with large printers like this, I was kind of constrained in how I could arrange the pieces on the build plate. So I basically had to angle the tail as you see here and put large amounts of support material underneath it just to get it to fit in the optimal way. But overall, as you'll see, it came out pretty well. Now the main body was of course the most challenging. It's the largest piece by far. The only way I could get it to fit was by putting it up on its end, which is good because it minimizes the amount of support material that's touching the piece and allows most of it to print uh, quite cleanly. Now I don't think you can truly appreciate how large this is from this video, but it is a huge print and quite tall as well. It took upwards of a week going constantly to finish printing which is kind of crazy. I was getting a little paranoid about it failing at the last second, but it did manage to complete. In fact, I have captured the uh, last few seconds of the print, as you can see right here. If you compare the height of the CR-10S4 on the left with the S5 on the right, you can see that I needed the extra inch or two of height to be able to fit this print on there. And here we are, finally <laughs> finishing up this extremely long print. It was kind of an emotional moment for me, as you might imagine. So, here it is. My final version. Uh, well, final before paint painting, anyway. Version of the Jumbo Jabba the Hutt figure. This one is about 32 inches from the tail to here, and about 16 and a half inches tall. And if we show it next to the vintage, well, I'm gonna have to move him over because I can't fit everything in frame. The vintage Bib Fortuna, you can see it looks a little bit more appropriate. So if we wanna look a little bit closer at the jumbo print itself, we can take off one of his arms just to bring it a little a little closer to you. And it's, generally speaking, quite smooth. Even though this isn't the finest layer height that you could print at by any means, I think it's perfectly fine for this size of a figure. The only thing is, the parts where the support material were, so in this case it was printing like this, and there's support material down here, they're a little rough. So I'm going to try and... Uh, possibly fill this in with a little putty and do some sanding to fix this. But all things considered, the rough parts are relatively minimal. So for example, as I showed you with the smaller scale version, I printed the body like this. And uh, because of that, there's relatively little area where the uh, support material was actually in contact with. And it kind of minimized any... Uh, roughness that might have been experienced. Uh, this, by the way, is the support material for the large one. And uh, I mean, it's pretty cool to look at and also to see how cleanly it came off. I was impressed by this. It was, it was not like super easy to get off. It was a little tricky to get off, but it came off cleanly when it, when it did come. And you can see because of the dense layer, uh, dense support layer that I put between the support material and the actual model. It seemed to uh, it seemed to really work well. I was impressed. Now it's the tail that I'm maybe the most worried about in terms of the finish. Let's see if I can. I can't even reach it so far away. Uh, well, okay. I'm going to take off the head. Excuse me here, John. I'm going to take off the head and then. Turn the tail a little bit here. Turn tail and run. You can see this is pretty bad. This is where all the sport material was. But because of the shape of this tail, I think this is about the only choice that I had. So I'm hoping, I mean, worst case scenario, I just leave it as it is. And because it's on the bottom, nobody's really going to know except me. But I would like to try and fix this a little bit better. I haven't inserted this uh, 
pan entirely yet because I don't <laughs> I want to be able to get this apart for painting. Anyway, uh, you can see on the bottom though, this is all very nice and smooth because it was not printed that way, it was printed vertically. And the same goes for the other side as well. So generally speaking, this came out extremely well. So the plan is basically, uh, as I said, to try and smooth out some of those rough parts and I'll be experimenting with putty and, and sanding and so forth for that. And then to spray this with a primer coat and then a an initial paint coat. And uh, I guess we'll then go in with brushes and uh, try and get it to look like the actual figure. Stay tuned. This Bondo I've had sitting around for a year or two and I wanted to finally use it. I know there are probably better things that I could be using for this, but uh, I thought it would work relatively well for this application. In the end, I sort of decided to just glob it on with my fingers, especially because I wasn't sure how long it was going to take to set. Uh, this has been sitting around for a while and the cream hardener had sort of turned to liquid, so I was a little unsure how it was going to react, but it did harden relatively well. After putting the Bondo onto the parts of the body and uh, sanding it sort of initially, I tried to get the tail wagging mechanism to work, but it just didn't seem like it was going to work very well, especially because once we've painted the parts, you're going to have movement here, and this is quite tight in places, so I'm afraid it's just going to end up scraping the paint off right away. And, you know, in all honesty, the tail wagging mechanism is not that important to me, so I have decided to just glue it together, as you can probably see. Um, inside there's some epoxy putty and epoxy glue going around here, and uh, it's pretty sturdy, I think. So we're just going to have this all be one piece, but still preserve the head and uh, arm movement because those really do contribute to, you know, allowing you to pose him, give him a little uh, personality and so forth. We can take a quick look at what I've done with the Bondo. This is after applying the Bondo and sanding it initially. It's still rough. Um, I'm not sure how much better it's going to get, but it looks better already than it did with all of the roughness from the support material removal there. Uh, I'm going to be spraying this with a filler primer and then sanding it again, and hopefully that'll help smooth some of this out. I also uh, did some Bondo on this side as well, just to cover up the roughness there. Now, to get the head to move, I mean, there's a couple of ways we can do it. You can just sort of plop the head on top and have it be a separate piece which is, you know, that's one way to go. But I would really want, I'd really prefer to have this all be one unified uh, figure, you know? I mean, it really feels better to have it that way. So what I've done is I've taken this peg part, which I, as I mentioned, just will not fit in here if it's attached. Um, I've taken it, printed it separately, cut it off digitally, and then I'm going to put these in here. You can see on the inside, there's a little groove here where this section fits. Put those inside thusly, and then I'm gonna glue, <laughs> I'm gonna put some glue on the top here and put the head on top. Once that dries, I think it will allow the head to move and yet still not come off which is the end goal here. So we'll see how that goes. So here we have the big guy all primed and lightly sanded all over, although I'm not planning to do the most thorough job on this, just getting everything super smooth or anything like that. I just don't think it's worth that amount of effort because it's just not going to show up that much on a piece of this size, I think. Uh, you know, I did, as you saw, put Bondo on the places where there had been rough spots from the support material and then sanded that pretty well. 
you may not be able to tell, uh, and I, in fact, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure either uh, what this is going to look like when I actually start putting paint on it, but I think it's going to look pretty good, uh, especially if we look at the bottom of his tail here. Excuse me, Java. Turn him over. Um, you can see this part, all of this had been really rough, and now it's, you know, it looks a little messy in a way because I've uh, put the Bondo on, I've primed it and then sanded it, and then I haven't uh, primed it again, and I don't think I will. But like here, you can see, even though it looks like you can still see the layer lines and stuff, I think actually once we put paint on top of this, it's going to look smooth. Uh, oftentimes I've found that to be the case. So uh, I'm basically going to call this good. I think it's good enough, you know, for the bottom of this piece, quite frankly. Uh, here, I could not get this to go in any farther, and uh, basically I was in the process of, uh, you know, gluing it in there, and it, <laughs> it got stuck at this at this point. Uh, but I think this is actually just fine because it acts as a kind of a balancing point for the whole body. And it's not that far off from the way the actual figure looked on the bottom, uh, if you want to look at that. It does have this thing here. It just doesn't stuck out, stick out quite as much. So anyway, uh, I think I'm, I'm going to call it good, as I say. I uh, did manage to get the head glued on so that it will stay. You know, I can pick up the whole thing by the head, although I'm not going to do that too often because it's pretty heavy. And it'll still stay on there and still be articulated, so that's good. Uh, it's got a little bit more play up and down here than I ideally would like, but this is fine. So basically, uh, the arms are just going to slot on like they normally did, and they're going to be a little on the on the loose side, but I think that's appropriate for <laughs> a vintage Java anyway. Alright, there we go. So you get the point. That's what we're going to uh, start our paint job with. And uh, now, of course, I have been using for my smaller pieces, like uh, this 3D printed Java here, I had used paints like this. This is uh, Army Painter War Paints. This is not going to work super well for something this gigantic. It would take, I don't know how many of these little um, containers of paint to cover something like this. It would not be very economical. So I am going to be using uh, just some standard acrylic paints that I've got lying around, and I think it'll be just fine. But it means that I'm going to have to experiment in uh, matching the color again, so we'll have to see how well that goes. I'm just using this apple barrel paint for the yellow and some Craft Smart for the brown, but it doesn't really matter what kind you use as long as it's acrylic. And I had a container here with a screw-on lid, it was an old ice cream container, that was very handy because I could mix up some paint and then come back and use that same paint later on. I don't normally mix up this much paint for things that I'm painting, but uh, in this case it was definitely very useful to be able to save the paint that I had already mixed up. Then I just went ahead and took a big brush and put down the first coat. I ended up putting, I would say, between two and three coats, maybe not three coats all over the place, but uh, certainly two and then maybe a third in places to cover up any place that the uh, primer was still showing through a little bit. And once I put the paint on the tail, it, it looked reasonably good. You know, it's not perfect, but it, it's not really visible either. You could basically stop at this point, but I went ahead and mixed up a little bit more yellow into the paint and started putting on some highlights with a, a modified dry brush technique. You don't want the brush to be too dry or it's going to come off kind of chalky looking. You have it be a little bit wet and just have, draw it across the highlights, across the raised portions of the sculpt. One thing I noticed about this paint is that it dries quite a bit darker than it looks when it's wet, so you have to kind of account for that. And I did go in and kind of add some highlights manually in a few places. And I also, in places like the uh, nostrils and the mouth, put in a little brown paint to accentuate the shadows there. But that's about it. 
And the only other place where you really need any paint on this figure is the eyes. I put a layer of red in there, first of all. Sorry, I couldn't get the camera in a very good place to show this. And once that was dry, I went in and put in a black pupil. And I also, off camera, I took a little bit of watered down brown paint and put it between the red and the yellow of the skin just to give it a little bit more definition there. But that's about it. And you can see here, uh, this is how it looks when it's basically finished, but I wasn't entirely satisfied with it because it looks kind of like it's painted. It's a little too matte looking. So I took some gloss coat. This is uh, crystal clear enamel and uh, just sprayed it all over the thing. And that actually really helped, I think. It not only helps protect it, but it eliminates some of that matte look that makes it obvious that it's been painted. So it actually looks like plastic. And here we have the finished Jumbo Java. And I'm really pleased with how he turned out. And it's, you know, it's been kind of a long journey with this project. I've been doing it for a few months. Uh, part of it is just that I got sidetracked and <laughs> started doing a bunch of other things with this model, like the, uh, you know, the holographic uh, figures and things that I did and the ones of different sizes and so forth. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, my main impetus for having the Jabba figure scanned in the first place was to make my own version of this Jumbo Jabba figure that apparently will never get made otherwise. And, uh, you know, the fact that I'm able to to actually ac accomplish that is really cool to me. Uh, that I can basically, on my own, aside from having the this figure scanned, uh, create something like this to uh, fill a hole in my collection is uh, really impressive. And it's kind of a testament to the power of 3D printing. Now, uh, speaking of the Jumbo uh, line, the uh, Gentle Giant Jumbo figure line, I wanted to compare this to, for example, the uh, Bib Fortuna figure that I made a video about a little while ago. We'll put him next to Jabba there. And I think you can agree that it's more or less the right size. And we can also compare it to the original Jabba figure there, as well as the original Bib Fortuna. I think they're roughly in scale. So the arms are still articulated, although they are only on kind of loosely, so they will come off if you're not careful. And the entire body or, you know, head and torso will turn thusly as well, which is nice. Gives you a little bit of uh, posability there. But this is, because it's all painted and everything, a little on the fragile side compared to something that was cast in this color. That is one thing that would have been nice to have in the Gentle Giant version. Presumably, they would have just cast it in the uh, appropriate color and maybe do some little highlights with paint, but it wouldn't be all over paint like this is. But still, uh, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. I would like to show off some other of my Gentle Giant jumbos, you know, in relation to this as well, but I think maybe that'll have to wait for another video. And, uh, you know, some of those I have never actually even introduced in videos on the channel as well. So I think that would be worth spending a little time on as well. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this look at how I created my own vintage Jabba Jumbo figure. And thanks very much for watching.